I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to think of something, just one thing that you are grateful for. We go through so much of the day constantly thinking about what we lack. Gratefulness is not something that comes natural to the human mind. So we think of one thing that we're grateful for. And in the spirit of Sabbath, we breathe. I'm going to tell you to inhale and exhale. And as you do with each inhale, I want you to think about that thing that you are grateful for and thank God for it. I want you to inhale the power and the presence of God. And I want you to exhale all of that fear, that doubt, that worry, that anxiety. Just release it out. In this moment, we'll inhale and exhale. We'll inhale and we'll exhale. Um, you know, some, some will question and some will think, well, I don't understand the concept of breathing, especially at church. It seems like it's yoga-ish, <laughs> but I, wanna, I, wanna, I, wanna, I, want, I want you to understand something that anytime you see any type of culture uh, or any type of technique expound upon something, I want you to know that there was, uh, there was a, a original place for it. And breathing is not something that was taken over by new ages, as we would assume. In fact, the breath of God is what was present first in Genesis, that after he created Adam, he created man, then it said that he, he breathed into his nostrils, which gave him life. And if you box breathing into uh, one's fear of thinking, then you've lost the essence of God, that your breath is on loan, and one day he will require it back that it is so powerful that he doesn't even allow for you to just do it consciously. It's a subconscious thing, because if I had to continuously tell myself to breathe, I'd probably be dead by now. Breathing is, is so sacred to God that even in the way that we say Yahweh, it is impossible for you to say it without the inhale and the exhale. Yahweh. Yahweh. Breathing is special to God. And any time that you are stressed out, you're going through something, you sit down long enough and you breathe. You know, when you're anxious about something or you're, you're having a hard time, you're having an anxiety attack, most people look at you and they say, breathe, baby, breathe, 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 breathe. breathe. Slow down, stop, breathe. Because it centers you and it brings you back to a place where you need to be. So we have to honor the breath. Honor the breath. I'm going to pray again, and I'm going, to, I'm going to go into this. Father, allow for me to do what I cannot do in my own flesh, and that's to be able to minister something that is powerful, potent, and also practical. I pray, God, that you use my tongue as the pen of the ready writer, ready to etch upon each and every heart of those in the sound of my voice, that every word that comes forth from my mouth is as a seed which is planted upon good ground, that you'll send other laborers along the people's path in order to water it, and you will receive the increase from it all. God, I pray that hearts are open and ready to receive. I pray that ears are open and ready to hear. I pray, God, that something is said that can pierce and provide change. And God, I pray that you are glorified in this time we have with you. It's through and by the mighty and the precious name of Jesus we pray. All is in agreement said, amen. Amen, amen, amen. If you have your Bibles, uh, I want you to look at something for me. I'm going to read it out. Um, I'm not really good at doing scriptures on walls and stuff like that, not because I don't believe in it, but because um, I usually don't have my scriptures ready until right before I come to church anyway. Um, I don't know, I've been doing this for so long that I don't, I don't really have them all together. So, uh, But I'm going to read it out so you don't have to worry about it if you don't have your Bible or if you can't see it. Um, and I'm, I'm praying for those people who are behind. It was a bad car accident on the 101. It shut down. I mean, we, we got past it, but I don't know if people are still trapped in that, however it is. But I'm praying for all those individuals, especially then the people who are uh, in that uh, uh, who, who are in that car. Uh, but 
Uh, we've been talking about the table and talking about how important and vital it is for us to be at the table. Uh, we, we've been talking about how the table is uh, a permanent fixture throughout uh, the entirety of, of Scripture. We went all the way back to the book of Genesis, and we saw how uh, when God gave Moses uh, the command to build the tabernacle, that even inside of the tabernacle, this, this moving vessel that God had him to build inside of it, uh, not the outer court, but in the, in, the holy, in the holy place, that in that holy place he had a table of showbread, uh, which would ultimately become important, uh, moving on into the, into the New Testament, uh, at the Last Supper when Jesus sat down with his disciples. And he looked at him and he said, one of you will betray me. And they all looked around, which one would it be? And then Judas said, you know, will it be me? And Jesus said, you have spoken correctly. And, uh, but there at that table, Jesus, Jesus presented them in our first taste of communion. And he said, you'll take of this bread. And he broke it and he said, and you'll eat it in remembrance of me. He said, you'll take of this wine, you'll drink in remembrance of me. The bread which represents his body, which was broken and mangled for each and every one of us. And then the wine, which represents his blood, the blood that was shed for us. And the difference between, and you, you question, well, why is the blood of Jesus so important? I've heard people talk about it, heard people sing it, but anybody's blood. I mean, why is his blood so special? That is because for for years and years and years, the way that it was set up was that in order for the people's sins to be forgiven, there was one day that God allowed for, for the high priest to go up and to make a sacrifice, and that was on the Day of Atonement. And the responsibility of a high priest was to, was to make a sacrifice and to take it into God, and, and that sacrifice was supposed to atone. That's what atonement means. It was, it, it was meant to atone the people's sins. Well, the word atone means to cover. And God recognized that that's not enough because the blood of lambs, the blood of sheep, the blood of goats, the blood of fatted calves, they weren't enough. That blood is not, is not, is not perfect enough, so it can only atone. So every year they had to continue to go back. Every year they had to go back. Every year they had to go back to atone for the people's sins. Now you say, well, what is so important about the blood of Jesus? Well, God said that's not enough. So what God did, he said, you know what? I'm going to step down. I'm going to step down onto earth. I'm going to wrap myself up into flesh. I'm going to come in through birth through a woman's womb, and I'm going to present myself and walk with people because that's what compassion does. Compassion doesn't look down from heaven and say, I hope you all are okay. Compassion says, I'll come and walk alongside you. So he came, wrapped himself up, and he became the sacrifice which was needed. So we can cry all day long that Jesus Christ was sacrificed, but that was the reason why he came. And the blood of Jesus Christ, because it was pure, it no longer atones, meaning it doesn't just cover our sins. It remits, which means it removes. So when you hear the old folk and they sing songs like the blood of Jesus that washes white as snow, what they're talking about is that it has remitted, it has removed it. That forgiveness, forgiveness from God was given to us long before we asked for it. And what he asks for us to do is to believe that we are forgiven. This is the power of the blood of Jesus. This is the power of his sacrifice. So we, 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 we've seen how this communion table is so important. And we've been talking about the, the, the importance of table fellowship, how we, we don't sit down with one another anymore. We don't, we, don't, we don't enter into, you know, real fellowship. You know, how are you doing? You know, looking people in the eyes anymore. Uh, the table is important from, from, from presidents and prime ministers and princes and kings that when another head of state comes in uh, to a country or to a state, they, they, they sit down at a table and they'll usually share a meal. In fact, in, in, in many Eastern cultures, an invitation to a table is an invitation into friendship. When somebody says, I want to take you to lunch, what they're saying is, is I want to be your friend. I want to enter into your world. Anytime you get an invitation to a table, it is one of the, it's one of the best invitations you can ever get. In fact, it's so important that Jesus even gave a parable about it. He talked about a man who, 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 who told his servant to go out and invite all of these reputable people to come and sit at a table. And all of them were too busy. None of them wanted to come. And he said, well, go out to the highways and the byways. Invite all of them. He said, because I got all this food. I got a big table. Somebody got to sit. And so he went to the highways, the byways, invited all these people who you wouldn't recognize to sit at the table. And they all came to, 
to sit down. The invitation to a table is one of the most important invitations you'll ever get. Because it says, I want to enter into friendship with you. I want to get to know you. I want to see you. I want to lock eyes. I want to hear your story. The table is important. Table fellowship is also important when it, when it comes to compromise. When it comes to understanding somebody else. When it comes to, when it comes to you know, the, the Bible says, if you have ought against your brother, it says, go to him. It says, if you have ought against your brother, it doesn't say tweet about him. If you have ought against your brother, it says, don't put up a subliminal post about him. It says, if you have ought against your brother, it says, go to him. Sit down with him. Because most time, the ought that we have ain't really valid anyway. You know, we heard that you said something from somebody else that did, you claimed you didn't say, and now we're trying to find somebody who said it. It says, we got to sit down at the table, and the table becomes important. And this past week, I had an opportunity to sit down at a table. Um, since, since 2018, I've been, I've been, well, 2018 and 2019, um, I, I, I go on these retreats and I go to Montana and different places. And um, starting in 2019, I said, you know, I want to, uh, or maybe in 2020 may have been, I said, you know, I want to I invite some guys to, to come out. And uh, so I, I host these retreats, and I get these guys, and we sit around the table, um, Montana and Wyoming and other places, and we're out in the middle of nowhere. And so this past week, I was out in Montana, and you know, I have all the guys, and we're sitting at a big table, and you know, we come together, and we eat dinner together. We have table discussion. We have table fellowship. It's even funny, you know, we'll go out, and we'll sit around the fire, and even though the fire isn't necessarily a table. We sit around that fire and some of the most groundbreaking conversation happens around that fire. Or we'll find a little small table that's in the corner over here and we'll sit at that table and we'll, we'll get to know each other and we'll talk. Out in the middle of nowhere, hour and a half away from the airport. It's one of those type of places that uh, if you got stabbed, then you better just cover it up because it's going to be a long time before you get to a hospital. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't going nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. Um, but there was a situation, I was, sitting at, I was sitting at a table the first night, and we were going around the, we were going around the table and we were talking about, you know, what is something that we want to get from this? And, and I forget how the conversation morphed, but, you know, I've been, we've been talking about being authentic at the table, being real at the table, being honest at the table, being open at the table, because you're not going to get anything out of anybody who's still trying to perform at the table. And so I was sitting there at the table, and I said, my time came around, and I said, you know, we, uh, you know, we started the church. Um, and I said, you know, I've, I've, I've wanted to quit every single day after we started it. And I keep asking myself, why in the world did I do this? And in my head, or not just in my head, I also say out of my mouth, I don't need this, <laughs> you know. I don't, I don't need the extra stress. I don't need the extra to-do list. Like, I have a great life. I, 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 I do, I, I'm good for me. And so, you know, it's almost like, God, why am I doing this for somebody else? I know the spiritual answer. I get it. You want to do it for God, all that kind of stuff. But if you allow for me to be real for just a minute, I just tell you, it, it, I, I get it. I get the walk of faith, and I get you want to please God. I get all of that stuff. Trust me, I heard it preached it all the time. But at some point, I just get selfish, and I say, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do me. And God, you can let them do them. And I, so I was going through that, and I said, you know, we had a situation where, um, you know, we, we, we got started with the church and, and um, our finances. You know, we had someone who, who gave, us a, gave us a check. Check got put into the bank. Bounced. Messed up all of our finances. Put us in a major deficit. And so I was telling the guys at the, I was telling the guys at the, uh, at the thing, I said, you know, this is, the, this is the situation that we found ourselves in where I don't know if we're going to have a place to even have service on Saturday. And they were all sitting there just kind of looking and, wow, you know, this is something. Just, you know. And then we kind of went to the next person and we just kind of went around. And they could tell I was, I was heavy thinking about what, what am I going to do? How am I going to get out of this? In fact, if, if you were here last Saturday or if you listened to the message from last Saturday, you know I preached on trust. And you didn't know it because I didn't share it with you, but the message wasn't necessarily for you. It was mostly for me. 
because my back was so far up against the wall that I'm like, you know what, God, I've done everything you told me to do. I don't know anything else. I don't know if you've ever been at the end of your rope before, but I was at the end of mine. And I got to the point, I said, you know what, if it dies, it dies. I'm okay. I'm, I, you know what, I did, I did everything I know to do, and everything in the beginning just isn't working right. So um, <clears throat> they could tell that things were going on, so went to bed that night, woke up the next morning, eating breakfast, and we're sitting around a smaller table smaller group of guys sitting at the table and sitting there and I'm eating, we're eating breakfast. And uh, one of the guys, my good friend Courtney, he's sitting at the, at the other end of the table and he looks and he says, uh, Cornelius, I know you mentioned uh, last night at the, at the table about, you know, the church and finances and everything. I said, yeah, you know. And he said, no, no, we don't have to have this conversation right now at the table because I know other people around. And if you want to keep that private, and I said, no, 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 no. We at the table. No, 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 no. Open it up. I don't mind. I have nothing to prove. I have nothing to hide. And I have nothing to protect. I need to be real and authentic at the table. If this is what I'm going to build as a church, as a community, then I have to practice it myself. I'm not ashamed. I know what I've done. I know what I'm doing. And I know where I'm going. I am not ashamed. Let's have the conversation right here at the table. So he said, okay, let's have it. He said, well, how much do you need? I said, this is what we need. He said, wow, okay. He said, well, you got a Zelle? I was like, man, are you kidding me? He's like, yeah, I'm sending you this. And I'm like, man, you know, great and everything. And then my friend Tim sits over here beside me, right here to the left of me. And mind you now, I've, I've contacted pastors I knew. I've contacted pastors I've helped. I've contacted people I knew. I've contacted people I've helped. And I, either I didn't get a response or all I got was no. And that drug me down even deeper because I thought to myself, I was there for you. And I, I, I remember, if I can think back, I was, I was there for you. And, and I, nothing, nothing, I just, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't fathom. I couldn't, I, couldn't even, I couldn't even think about it. I had pastors who, who, were, who had pledged and said, I'm going to pledge for your launch to give you this and give you that. I, I can't even get a text back. And it just drove me even deeper. Like, you know, God, I, I, are, am I sure I did? I remember having a conversation with my wife. I was like, what were we thinking? Are we, we, we heard him, didn't we? And we like, we had peace, didn't we? And she's like, yeah, we had peace. And I'm like, well, I ain't got no peace right now because this ain't good. But I'm sitting here at this smaller table. Sitting at this smaller table. And I got my buddy who's sitting over here, Tim. He's sitting over here to the side right over here. And I'm sitting right here at the table, and I'm leaned back. And he said, uh, well, how much do you need? I told him, he said, I'll give it to you. I'm sorry, Negro, I ain't hear what you just said. <laughs> I think you might need to repeat yourself, because uh, <laughs> he said, yeah, yeah, um, I think I can do that. You know what? Let me um, let me call my wife. He said, uh, "You got a way I can." He said, "You know, I, I had to do it like this or your check." And I said, "He said, when do you need it?" I said, "I need it today." He said, um, "Hold on, I think I can do that." Now we're out in the middle of nowhere. My phone barely works, and we ain't got no Wi-Fi. And he sits there and he says, uh, "Yeah, I can. I, I can do that." Goes to, he goes to, he uses my phone. He said, well, I'm probably need to use your phone to contact my wife. You can use my phone. You can use my laptop that don't work. You can use my iPad. I will, I will give you a pigeon if you want it. And he, <laughs> I handed my phone. He went, he called his wife, and he said, oh, okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. He came back. He said, yeah, yeah, we can, we can do it. And, and I'm sitting, sitting there thinking, because now at this point, I'm not trying to overindulge in the fact of him knowing but I need this today. You know, I don't want to be that guy. Like, thank you so much, but today. Today. Like, not, not tomorrow, today. So he sits there and he says, well, let me, let me see if I can get a laptop. He gets one of the guys, gets a laptop, gets Wi-Fi, and he's, he's, he's getting ready to do the wire transfer, and then it says rejected. Not because he didn't have it. It said rejected because they thought it was fraud. 
So he calls them, he calls the bank. And he says, hey, I was getting ready to send a wire transfer. I don't understand what's going on. They said, oh, it's fraud. We, we thought it was fraud. The only way to unlock your account is for you to come into the bank with your ID. <laughs> so at this point, I'm, my faith is already uh, underneath the floor at the time. So I just said, you know what, God? If it ain't one thing, it's another one. All right. All right. That's okay. I won't have it today. I won't have it tomorrow. I won't have it ever. And it's just fine. That's just what it is. And he looked at me, he said, uh, he said, I'm going to get a ride. He said, the nearest bank is about an hour and a half away, but I had to be there before 3 o'clock. I said, do I, do I need to go with you? Are you okay? Do you need anything on your way? Can I, can I get you a glass of water or a glass of coffee on your trip? He goes down to the town. I get a text message. Wire transferred. I want to share this in 1 Corinthians 12, starting at verse 14, it says, For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot says, Because I am not a hand, I am not part of the body, it is not for this reason any the less part a body, uh, any, uh, any the less a part of the body. And if the ear says, because I am not an eye, I am not part of the body. It, it says, it is not for this reason any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as he desired. If they were all one member, where would the body be? But now there are many members, but one body. It's, it's going to get better. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, it is much truer that the members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which deem less honorable, on those we bestow more abundant honor. And our less presentable members become much more presentable. Whereas our more presentable members have no need of it. But God has so composed the body giving more abundant honor to that, member to, uh, to, that, to that member which lacked, so that there may be no division in the body, and that the members may have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members are honored and rejoice with it. It never fails it. I don't, know if, I don't know if it goes through, like, I don't know if it, it happens to you like this with God. But it never fails that any time I get ready to study something or he shows me a vision of something, I get confronted with the test of the very thing that I'm studying. It's, it's, almost, it, it, it's almost like I'm, 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 I'm really learning his M.O. When I say his, I'm talking about God's. I'm starting to see exactly what he does. That he's like, if you're going to understand it, it can't just be studied. You have to experience it. You, if, if, it's, one thing, it's one thing for us to lift up our hands and sing, God, I trust you. But to trust when you can't see, that's something else. It's one thing to talk about sitting at a table and being authentic because, I mean, we've talked about this. We've talked about that how sitting at a table and being authentic is so against, you know, everything that our, our human vessel wants to do. We don't want to do that. We walk in with every mask we have on. We walk in and you're trying to be somebody else. You know, we, we portray all type of different characters for the different people we are. We, in, in fact, in, 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 you know, in the culture that I'm in, we, we call it code switching. You know, you got one way you act at work, one way you act at, you know, act at school, one way you act in the, in, in the grocery store, and one way you act at home, and another way you act in the car. We switch it all up. And God calls us for a sense of authenticity at the table. But a greater message 
is that I need to, I need I needed to tell you the story because I need for you to I need I need to nail this in your head that everything you need the answer you're looking for is at a table it's at a table the, the answer you're looking for is at a table whether or not you choose to sit down at that table because if I go back and my, my friend Gordon he, he actually looked at me and he said he said imagine if you chose not to be honest. He said, we wouldn't have known. And then I would have carried that and then tried to act like I wasn't carrying it. But they could tell I was carrying it, but I, I, I didn't, I didn't, but I, you know, I, I want to I preserve face. Act like I got it all together. I don't. I wish I did, but I don't. He looked at me, he said, no, no, what, what, if, what if I would have, when I asked you, do you want to talk about it later? And you say, yeah, yeah, because I don't want everybody else to know my business here at this table. What, 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 if, what if me and him would have had the conversation, but then my buddy over here, he, just, he completely missed out on it because I don't want everybody here to know it. At some point, we got to rip off all this religious crap and all this, all this makeup, all this crap that we've, we, we built up and we put up as facades and just say, you know what? Man, I, I'm human like the rest of us. I got a lot of work to do. I need help. And let me just be honest with you, at the table, I don't have it together. I wish I did. You can tell me whatever you want to tell me about your life, but it will never come to a point where I'll judge you because guess what? I know just how messed up I am. And I got some needs. If you want to hear about them, I can tell you. I ain't going to just burn them out, but I can tell you if it's what it is. You ask me how I feel, I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel. And then now if something can be provided, at least we give God. God an opportunity to allow a willing vessel to give us exactly what we need. I think we complicate the simplicity of this word. We're looking for God to rain down stuff from heaven. And he says, I gave you the rain down from heaven. Hey, you, you got an invitation to go sit down at a table. But because you're introverted, you don't want to. Because you don't want new friends, you don't want to. Just go sit down at the table. Go meet the people. Go meet your neighbors. You don't know. Because one day you may need the neighbors. And then we look at the body. And we have to start, we have to start thinking to ourselves, man, how do we come together? How do we provide for each other? I, I, I know this is not a, a message on tithing, but uh, a lot of times when you hear Malachi, Malachi 3 preached, if you ever heard it preached before, then you, you, I, I know you've heard it preached on tithing. Bring all your tithes to the storehouse. And then he goes into a warning. He says, now, if you don't bring the tithes to the storehouse, he said, now, the devourer will not be rebuked for your sake. And then we go into all those things. So then, so then people get scared and they say, well, if I don't tithe, then this is going to happen and this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. And I didn't tithe last week is the reason why my tire popped. I didn't tithe, and because I didn't tithe, I lost my job. Because I didn't tithe, because the blessing is supposed to be tied to the tithe and all that other kind of mess. And, and so we, 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 get, we get into this tit for tat of works with God. That somehow God is mad at me because I didn't do something. When anytime you read anything in the scriptures, you have to understand context. In Malachi, the prophet was speaking directly to the Jews. And he was saying to them, he was saying, you're not bringing that tithe into the storehouse. And, and here's the thing. A tithe, tithe wasn't always money. So it, was, it was barley and grain. He says, you, you didn't bring that into the storehouse. So why in the world would they need to? Because it was purpose for the Levites. Because the Levites didn't have an inheritance. So he was saying, listen, you're, if, if you're going to be a greater body, he said, you who have something, would you just take off a piece of it, a pinch? And would you put it in a storehouse that the Levites may be able to eat, that they might be able to live, because they don't have the inheritance? Would you put, would you put something in a storehouse for the widows, for the orphans? Because I know you got it, but let's put something away for somebody else. Even then in the Old Testament, God was showing us how everything we need can be right there at the table. He says, if we all work together and recognize we're all part of the same doggone body, fitly jointed, fully supplied. 
He says, and then not only that, but I, I'll, give, I'll give you gifts. He said, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the apostle, and I'll give you the pastor, and I'll give you the teacher. And he says, I'll give you the evangelist. He, he, he says, he says I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you some gifts and, so they can, they can help to build you up. For the edification of the saints. He says, so now that you can go do the work of the ministry, he says, I'm, I'm, putting, it, I'm putting the whole body together. But, but notice how the enemy has completely separated us. We're over 2,000 years since the crucifixion of our, of our Lord and Savior. Over 2,000 years. And we are more divided than we've ever been before. We can't agree on theology. I mean, nowadays it's like, you know, do you, do you want to, you know, I invite people, hey, we'd love for you to come and sit at our table at Sabbath LA. The first question they ask is, are you, you know, what's your denomination? Y'all have church on Saturdays, well, y'all must be seven-day Adventists. Why can't we just get together on Saturdays? Why don't we just get together on Saturday? Why you? Well, I got to put a title to it. No, we 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 just we just love Jesus and authenticity. Well, it, well, you know, well, I don't understand why you do it on the Sabbath. Well, I mean, I mean, heck, some people do it on Wednesday. Does it matter? Well, I usually go on Sundays. Well, I don't want to go on Sundays because I may want to stay at home and watch football. Saturday is good for me, and anybody else who want to come on Saturdays, they can. It's Saturday, it's Saturday work. You know, and and it's like, but we're we're so divided. We got this theological group over here that's fighting with this theological group over here that, that you know, abortion is wrong over here. And, and they're so strong in, into, into, into their fight against it that they don't even realize that even the person who's having the abortion, they're just giving them, they're just put, pouring on more and more shame. You're going to hell. Instead of providing the compassion that the person needs that can arrest their heart and bring them back. We, we, we're so... We, to the point that religion has just gotten mean. I mean, we have a whole war right now that's being fought in the Middle East right now over religion. I don't care what side you fall on. It's, we, have, we, we, we are more divided than we have ever been before. And, and it's, it boggles my mind. But I'm telling you something. The power of the table, it works. Everything I've been teaching here, you got to take off the mask. You got to get real. You got to get honest. And you got to step outside of your comfort zone in order to start sitting at tables. I, I meet married couples who are like, yeah, we just bored. We don't have anything to do. Go ask another married couple, hey, would, can, can we go to lunch? Can we go do this? You know? Go sit down with somebody. You, well, I, don't, well, I don't know what to do with my life, and you need a mentor. A ask somebody, hey, can I take you to lunch? I'll take you to lunch. And maybe it work out, maybe it don't, but something is at a table. And I don't know what invitations that you've received, but whatever invitation it is, you need to go back to that, you know, <clears throat> go, you know, go back to it and say, you know what, I want to sit at that table. But the sad thing is, most of the tables, most of the tables that we sit at are the ones that we should be flipping over. We want to sit at tables with people who are prestigious and who have this and who have that and all this stuff because it makes us look better. God's like, you don't need that crap. Sit down at the table with the least of these. And then you quickly learn they have a greater story than anybody else. It's something about having that willingness to sit at that table and trusting God that, God, I don't know what I can get out of this. But, God, something good can come out of it. That you're a good God and that this is just what you do. I'm going to keep hammering home this message of the table because God's got, I, I, I guess the way he's going to do it is just going to keep taking me through more and more tests at the, at the table. It seems like everything that happens at the table. I come home and I tell my wife, I say, you'll never guess what happened. I was sitting at a table today and my wife, she looked, she said, there go that table again. There go that table. There go that table. I'm like, yeah, I was sitting at a table and then this happened and this happened and then the guy said this and did this and he broke down crying and, and he said he's going to get back with his wife and all this stuff happened at the table and, and this guy got saved at the table. I mean, I, I, <sighs> we're out in Montana and had a wooden table. A man confesses Jesus Christ. 
I, it wasn't a church service. No, you, you got to understand what I'm saying. It wasn't a church service. They didn't have praise and worship. They didn't have lights. They didn't have a microphone. They didn't have, any, they didn't have a Bible in their hands. They didn't have any of that stuff. All they had was a wooden table that both of them sat at together. It was simple, but life-changing. And the core of this message is, I don't know what God put in you. But I know that you have an answer for somebody who's in need. You may not think you do, but I'm telling you, you have an answer for somebody who's in need. Somebody right now is hoping and praying they get an answer that you got. And all I'm asking you to do is to be willing to sit at the table. And then secondly, after you sit at that table, be willing to make an offering. If you can. If it's within your wheelhouse and within your ability to make the offering and saying, let me help. I mean, the Bible tells us that. The Bible says don't just pray to somebody if you have the ability to be able to help them. Don't just they tell you what it is and they say, well, I'm going to pray for you. I, I'm going to pray for you. I gotta, I, I'll be honest with people now. People are like, would you please pray for me, Pastor? And I'd be like, I, I ain't going to lie to you. If I don't do it now, I ain't going to never do it. I know, I know, other, I know y'all spiritual. Y'all get up in the morning at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, have an hour of power. I don't. God doesn't sleep or slumber. I do. So after I wake up and I pray on my way to the gym, I'm driving to the gym, and I, that's, that's my time with God. He's sitting right there in the passenger seat with me. God going to be woke when I wake up. I ain't super spiritual about it. So if I don't pray right now here with you, I probably ain't going to do it. I apologize. Well, no, Pastor, I want you to put me on your prayer list. I, I ain't got one. I wish I did. My wife does. My wife has a long one. Her, she got a whole notebook full of them. If you ever want an intercessor, you go to my wife. Go to Heather Lindsay. She got an intercessory prayer team list. I mean, she got your name written down, shouting them out to the Father. That ain't my ministry. I, I love you, though. I love you with the love of God. I do, I, I do. I'll pray for you standing right there. God's coming to me in the gym, and they say, hey, I heard you were a pastor. I want to know what you pray for me. Come on, let's do it right here. Put your ways down. Let's do it right here, because if I, if, if I leave, I won't forget. I love you. I'm just being honest. But I want you to know that whatever you got, number one, that you don't have to have all the answers to be an answer to someone in need. You got to have all the answers. One word can be life-changing to somebody who's in need. Number two, don't be afraid to sit at tables that intimidate you. If you get invited to sit at the table, sit your butt down. Don't look at people and think to yourself, like, oh, I don't know if I deserve to be at this table. I don't know if I deserve to be here. I don't know. And, and, if, it, and if that bothers you, then let you know. I, I, I've, sat, I've sat at tables with men and women who have more degrees than a thermometer. They are smart as a whip. Intellectuals, you know, theologians have been to seminary. They know it all. I haven't been to one Bible class, but I preached around the world, and I've, I've stood in front of thousands and thousands. And before I got on the stage, no one asked me, where was your degree? That's because when I sit at a table... I confidently sit there because I know the wisdom I got didn't come, didn't come from somebody else who wanted to teach me. The wisdom that I got came from experience, and it came because God embedded it in me. And it, it, it's, People don't care where you got it from as long as you got the answer. They don't care about that crap. People are hurting out there. People are hurting. They are hurting. They are dying. They are scared. They are depressed. They're suicidal, they're anxious, and all they want is for somebody to look at them and care enough to say, Will you come sit down with me, baby? Let me talk to you. You don't look like yourself. I just want you to sit at a table long enough to get what you need and then to be able to give somebody else what they need. Why you think, why you think it, it, the, the studies show that families? And the studies show, y'all, that families and children, they mature in a healthier way when the family sits down together at the table. And they eat dinner together and they talk at the table. It talks about how sitting at just a family sitting at the table.
helps you raise healthier children because it gives your kids an opportunity to talk. My wife will look and she'll say, what is the peak and the pit and the peach of your day? What is the highest point? What's the lowest point? And what is the peachiest point? And the kids will sit there and they'll say, oh, the highest point was lunch. Oh, the lowest point was that I didn't score at the, at the soccer field. The peachiest point was that I got a chance to play with my friend. It's just those little moments that they're able to share that may not mean much to you in the moment, but what it really means to them is somebody asked me something because they cared enough to listen about what I went through. And you got to be that for someone. I feel led to pray right now, and I'm going to do that as our closest. Um, Father, I pray that you help us <clears throat> to expand our vision, to build tables so that other people may be able to sit, to find rest, to find comfort, and to find the nourishment that they need. God, make us a hospitable people who are not selfish with what you have given to us. Allow for us to be able to be an answer to someone else, God, who is in need. Allow us, God, to be able to go and help fill up the storehouse for others, trusting that you will fill up ours. Father, we know that a giver will never lack because he or she will always have seed in the ground. Always. A farmer never has to worry about going hungry because somewhere along in the fields, the seeds have become a harvest. So God, we don't worry. We're not anxious. I, I pray, God, you help us to remove the mask that we put on. That we become naked before you and others. We remove our fig leaves to finally be honest about the things we're going through. Marriages which are falling apart and husbands and wives can't open up their mouth to say, this is what I'm going through because they're too afraid of what somebody else thinks about them. Who cares about that crap? What goes on in this house stays in this house and that's why the house is burning down right now. God, help us to just be honest. Well, I don't want nobody talking about me. Newsflash, they're talking about you anyway. <laughs> God, help us. Help us to get the answers we need at the table. And most importantly, help us to be an answer at the table. If you don't know who Jesus Christ is, maybe joining me from afar, you don't know who Jesus Christ is. I talked about him earlier. <clears throat> To be overwhelmed by his compassion is for you to say that there's no greater love that has arrested my heart. There's, there's, there's no greater sense of, of longing that, is, that has embraced me. And because I feel that, because I know that I have no other choice, ah, but to open up my own heart and make a confession of my faith that Jesus Christ, you are my Lord and my Savior. The Bible is very clear. It says, if you confess with your heart or confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, it says that you shall be saved. That's just what it says. That's all it says. And the reassurance of the faith is that the confession of my faith means that I never have to worry about death. Death doesn't scare me. I'm not concerned about dying because death has already been defeated. Oh, yes, this body, as the Bible says so, 
returned back to the dust of the ground for which it was born. But this body was just on loan. The breath that I had when I came forth from my mother's womb and I took that first cry, ah, that breath that he gave to me, he requires it back. But I know that in this life, that even though I'll pass from this life, I'm still going to be with him in New Jerusalem. And I can only find reassurance of that, not because I studied it. It's not because of some type of ideology I've had. It's not because of some book I read. It's because I had an experience and an encounter with him for myself. The Bible says it is the Holy Spirit who convicts you of your sin. I don't have to do it. But if you feel so convicted, Jesus Christ, you ain't got to know all the answers. Well, could it be Muhammad? Could it be Buddha, or could it be this, or could it be all of that? Let, the, let, <laughs> let him encounter you. It'll change your world. Secondly, um, baptism. It's extremely important that if you, if, if you desire to be baptized, I want to make sure you understand what that means. There's a form on our, on our website, sabbathla.com backslash connect, I believe it is. <clears throat> you would go there and uh, you fill out that, that baptism form. Fill it out. We want to make sure that you get baptized. But I need you to understand and a answer. Uh, you can ask any question you want to ask and make sure you, you get that you get what you need there. Um, also on, on the Sabbath LA page, uh, if, you, if you desire to serve at any, any place, fill out that form. We can get to you, all that kind of stuff. I, I'm, I'm believing that everything we need is going to be at our table. And that God's sending the right people with the right hearts who desire to give to this table. That's just, that's all I can do. Everything else is out of my hands and out of my control. Thirdly, if God, if God lays upon your heart to give, I told you exactly where we were. But I'm hopeful as we move forward. I know what God can do. I've seen him do this. This is not my wife and I, this is not our first time, this is not our first time, you know, starting a church. We started a church in, in 2013 and I pastored for 10 years. And we started a church, we, we rented out, remember that baby, it was an old uh, movie theater. My mama was there with us then. Landmark Cinema in downtown Atlanta. It used to be Coca-Cola things on the floor and stains on the floor and you would walk and it'd be sticky. Mice used to run in and out. Other thing, I mean, there would be a whole row of women sitting there, and all of a sudden, you just in the middle of the sermon, they just start going up, and they just see them just holding their legs like this, not trying to be an interruption. I'm thankful for these lights and the piano player, because back then when we got started, I had an iPad that I sat up like this, and that's how that's how I did live stream. I did a thing. I was having to look into the thing at the at the uh, laptop. We didn't, have, we didn't have worship singers, so we used to play YouTube on the movie screen. And back then, they didn't have YouTube Red, so we had commercials. And I don't know if you've ever been pray, lifting up your hands and praying to God, and all of a sudden, they had a Cialis commercial come on. But I've walked through that. <laughs> I, we did that. We did that. Yeah, that, that, that was, hey, and we just sit there, and I would be praying for the 15 seconds. Them the longest 15 seconds ever. But as soon as they, as soon as that 15 seconds hit, boom, they just said, how great. He just go right back to it. And we just, we just go back to it. You know, it's just, hey, this is what we had to do. We didn't have any parking lot people. We didn't have any ushers. People come to me and say, why don't you have ushers? And I say, well, you go to the movies, you just sit down, just find a seat. Just pick one you got. If you don't want to sit next to that person, go to the other side. I don't know. You know, we, that's, that's how we got started. And then we grew and we grew and we grew and we grew. And then we started having this staff. And then we started having signs. And then we started having this. And then we started having that. And we started having all this other kind of stuff. And now here we go. And I was telling a friend the other day, I said, you know, the only difference between now and then is that back then you didn't get a chance to see me do it. You came in on the back end and you thought, oh, how easy this must be. But thank God that he gives me the opportunity to do this again so that you can actually see the journey. And we're going to believe that everything we need is in this house. So as you look forward and look ahead, ask God, whatever it is, God, whatever it is you desire for me to give, I just ask you to be obedient to him. That's all I do. 
last thing I want to do is I want you to think right now about somebody who you want to go and sit at a table with. Or better yet, somebody with whom you would like to invite to a table. God's been putting that person on your heart. Maybe a coworker. It might be a friend. It might be a family member. Maybe there needs to be some reconciliation you need to have with somebody. You may be falling out with a sibling or something like that. Maybe between you and your parents, you and your child. So maybe you, you and somebody else, and you need to be able to have that conversation. I, I, I want you to take seriously the answer at the table. And I want you to take that step of faith as you leave from here to reach out to that person and say, may I take you to lunch? Now, if the person declines, they just decline an invitation, one of the greatest invitations of their life because they just missed out on an amazing answer. But don't allow for their decision to affect yours. Make that decision. Reach out to them. Let me bless you. <clears throat> now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless unto him who provides us peace and rest for our soul. Unto him who loves us deeply and treasures the soul in which he gave us. Unto him who watches over us and protects us in our going and our coming. Unto him who loves us even in our moments where we are the most unlovable. Unto him who gives us grace abounding. Unto him who is merciful. Mm. Unto him. Unto him. God, I pray that you bless these people. That your blessing that it lives on top of them. That such an anointing radiates from their being that when they encounter other people this entire week, that they're going to ask them, what is that on you? And may, their, may the only comment they provide, God, is to say, the God that I love is touching me, that I may touch you. We love you. We thank you. Until we sit here at this table again, bless them, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen.